The reality is that we will all have seasons in our life when the sun is shining and everything is as it is supposed to be. But the rain will fall. There will come a day where the storm comes and the winds of life rush your way. But will you still be standing? God has equipped you to stand in the midst of a storm. Today, we're talking about faith that overcomes fear. Welcome to Solid Rock Christian Assembly, where we stand on the rock, that's Jesus Christ. Stay tuned to hear from Pastor Garth Rowe. Solid Rock, Lord, you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to be coming into your homes uh, this morning. Uh, we're talking to many of our uh, own people who would ordinarily be here worshiping with us uh, this morning, but circumstances would have it uh, for us to be uh, creative uh, to utilize the online media to speak to you today. So please feel at home. Please uh, settle down. Uh, do not be there, you know, multitasking. But we're here to worship God today in spirit and in truth. I believe God would have me to speak into your heart and to encourage you a bit. Not only am I, are we encouraging our own people who are at home today, but we have many who would be watching us uh, week after week. And so we want to acknowledge you today. Those of you who are watching us, we are aware of various nations. There are individuals across this nation of Canada that's watching us. Uh, in the States, we do know that there are uh, different parts of the Caribbean, especially Jamaica, and we want to welcome you. We also know that there are others in India, Pakistan, and so especially in Asia, I want to welcome those of you who are with us today uh, via Hosanna Television. And so God bless you. And I, I don't know what you're going through today, but I can say to you that the God that you and I serve, who sees the big picture, who sees the beginning from the end, and who's able to have a holistic, global, universal picture when it comes to your life, that God, you serve him and I serve him. And as a result of that, we have hope like no one else. And so thank God for you today. Welcome. I do want to share uh, a word with you today. It's from the book of Hebrews. And if, I, if I'm going to entitle this, uh, this message today, I'd like to call it Faith That Overcomes Fear. Faith That Overcomes Fear. In the writing of Hebrews, uh, more specifically Hebrews chapter 10, uh, if you have your Bibles, I'll give you a moment just to find it there. In Hebrews chapter 10, uh, you will find words like this. This is, this is if we, we can start at uh, verse 35. Hebrews 10, starting at verse 35. It says this, Therefore, do not cast away your confidence which has great reward. You know, there are, there are rewards to your confidence if it's saturated in God. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, that is the capacity to, 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 to be able to stay the course and to do it through thick and thin. You have need for endurance. So that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. And that is so good to know that our God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. For yet... A little while, and he who is coming will not tarry. Now, uh, my focus here, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but those who believe to the saving of the soul. And let me just read a, a couple other verses. Now faith, that's the... Next verse over in chapter 11 is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, and by it, or by it, the elders obtain a good testimony, their testimony 
and their, uh, their, their, their righteousness, their affirmation, and God's, you know, uh, exoneration and praise of them came as a result of their faith standing. It says there later on, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. Faith becomes the, 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 the foundation for the believer. Verse uh, 6 of Hebrews, it says this. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Father, we thank you for your word and we look to you to honor it as we bless you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The faith that overcomes fear. Over the last several weeks, fear has made an incredible entrance into the life, in the, into the lives of humanity. We watch in amazement as China went into this sort of code red or survival mode. Shutting down the city of Wuhan, a place with over 10 million people. It didn't stop there, but hundreds of millions of kids were taken out of school. Probably some 800 million people were taken out of the workplace and a quarantine process like never before, or, 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 like never before was unfolding before our eyes in the most populous nation of the earth. This included the feat of building a, a giant hospital in a matter of a, a week. All this was an attempt to combat this, this new strain of this coronavirus, which is called COVID-19. I suppose COVID probably means uh, corona and, and the vid part of it, viral disease, or, um, and then 19 as to the year that it came into existence. So they were there battling this new strain of this COVID-19 that somehow got loosed in that nation. The spread did not end there in the nation of China as we watch from a distance and, and, and see the aggressive onslaught of this disease and the incredible actions that were being taken to resolve uh, at this pandemic. But the spread did not end there. Asian nations such as Japan, South Korea, and India started taking unprecedented action in order, actions in order to protect their nations from the spread of this disease. Again, it didn't stop there. We came into the Middle East. And Iran started experiencing an unusual uh, uh, spread of this. And you could see the, the, the fear. That, and it started affecting people. It was, no long, it, was, it was not a disease that would be affecting you know, the poor and the isolated, the homeless. Or it started affecting people at all ranks. And that was evident, especially in Iran at the time. Israel started having uh, people who would come there to... To, to, to see the Holy Land, and they would take these individuals who would come on a 10-day trip to view the various parts of, uh, of, 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 of Nazareth, uh, uh, Capernaum, and uh, Jerusalem, and the different parts, the Dead Sea, and, and all these different parts of Israel, but instead they were locked away in quarantine. I was speaking to someone who just came back, and she made mention that we barely left there. We were probably the last group to actually see the Holy Land. Everyone else was placed in quarantine. There was a deliberate attempt to protect nations from the spread of this disease. European nations such as Spain, the United Kingdom, Kingdom Germany, Italy, and places like that started to see um, the spread of it. And after a while, it, 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 um, that area started to become the epicenter of what was, you know, what was happening here with this disease. Things were a bit calmer in our hemisphere. However, it did not last for long. Soon after that, Canada, the United States, uh, 
various uh, other nations in this hemisphere, the, the, the uh, nations like the island nations, uh, they started to protect their border and start to take incredible actions to stop the spread of this disease. And as they continue, we start to realize that, man, this thing is serious. It puts us in a position that we've never really been in before. I cannot recall anything close to this in terms of the stopping of the globe. All these actions have basically re resulted in the entire globe coming to a standstill. As a result, we have a global economy that is reeling on, on, on many, many levels, whether it's agriculture or tourism or the cruise line or the airline or the manufacturing, construction, trade, healthcare, the oil sector, um, restaurants, uh, finance, and you name it. Somehow there is this, in, uh, th th this, this incredible uh, um, uh, ability to try to maneuver and try to deal with all the dynamics that, 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 that we're, that's coming right now as a result of this um, plague. The future right now is unknown on many levels. The questions are yet to be answered. When will this end? At this point in time, it's everyone's guess. We understand that the United States, they were looking to, to, to get the economy going and to get the, 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 the people back into the, uh, back into the work sector by Easter. Uh, from the looks of it, many, many said such a thing is just not possible at this point in time. Most recently, the Premier of Ontario here in Canada, uh, I think we, uh, he made a statement like we may be looking to go into the summer months uh, bunkered down as we are at this point in time. The reality is that no one really knows when this will end. The question is how many will die. Again, we do not know. We're seeing in Italy, uh, you know, a pretty uh, strong impact at this point in time. Last count is that there were well over 9,000. Uh, I don't know if, if it has reached the 10,000 mark at this point in time, but we're seeing, uh, you, you, you know, this uh, thing here uh, permeating nations, creating fear. Not, not that other things um, uh, did not result in, in more, more death than what we're looking at, at today. There have been many other things, including even the common cold, flu. When will it, how many will die? We do not know. Estimates have been outrageous. At one point, there was a, 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 um, a, some sort of a statement made in Europe that in the UK, we would probably be looking at the death of half a million people, and in the United States, 2.2 million. Those numbers seem uh, highly exaggerated at this point in time, but regardless, you have numbers as high as that to at times where people were hopeful that nothing would happen. But the reality is that we're dealing with a challenge on a global level at this point in time. Next question, what will the global and local economy look like when this comes to an end? Again, we do not know. We do know, however, that we have seen the tanking of, um, uh, of, of the stock market and we're seeing the challenges in, in all those aforementioned sectors. We talked about everything from agriculture to tourism to hotel and food to oil and so many others. We're seeing here that no one is exempted in terms of what is happening at this point in time. They ask, will it get better? Well... Um, from a standpoint of hope, we do always and we should always have the mindset to be hopeful that things will get better. Will it get better? Uh, it is just a matter of time for us to figure that out. Will it get worse? Again, we do not know. But I can say one thing, ladies and gentlemen, is that in the midst of all of this, we have been presented here with a scenario that is ripe 
for fear to permeate our hearts and our minds. But as believers, as individuals who, 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 who fear God, as, as, as individuals who honor God and desire to see God rule and reign, we do not have to be of that sort. And um, we must not be fearful. We must not be fearful. We must be adequately informed as it relates to what's happening in life. We must be adequately informed. But listen, we must not conform. We must, not, we must be informed, but not conform. Our job is to be transformed. The Word of God declare as it relates to us that though we walk, in the flesh. In other words, we live like anyone else here on planet Earth. We are occupants of this globe, just like anyone else. It's our home. It's where we live, we, or we raise our family, we work, and we, we socialize, and we benefit mutually from all the discoveries and the things that we do possess. We work to make each other's existence better. Though we walk in the flesh and we are, uh, though we are uh, of this world, are in this world, we are not of this world. The Bible said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Why is that? The Bible said, because the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We're able to cast down imagination. In, in other words, we're able to arrest our thoughts and to bring it into obedience to the word of God. I tell you today, this is a humbling experience for all of us. It's a humbling experience that, that, that we all of a sudden, one moment can feel as if we are just so big, so giant, and, and God is so irrelevant and so unnecessary in this life. We act as if we are king of the hills. This is our world. God is irrelevant. But then all of a sudden, here we are facing a challenge like this, and every single one of us here we are battling for position, for safety, and for survival. The bottom line is that we cannot guarantee our next breath. We must live with the understanding that there is a force, there is a source, and more importantly, there is a personal God that, lives, that, 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 that is higher than us. He owns the title deed of this world. He owns the title deed of the universe. And if God owns it, like the word of God declares, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the things which are didn't, 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 came about as a, from the things which are basically unseen. In other words, the unseen God was able to to take from the unseen, uh, uh, the unseen God was able to bring the seen, on the scene from the unseen. He spoke, and then all of a sudden, time, space, and matter came into existence. The reality is that there has to be a source and a power, a God that is well beyond us. And the God of the Bible introduced himself to us. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It tells about the formation of time, space, and matter, and who is the architect of it all. His name is God Almighty. The reality is that we serve a great God, and we must humble ourselves before God. But let me just stick to what I was uh, trying to say here. We must be adequately informed but we must not be conformed there is because our job is to be transformed. And this transformation come as a result of us allowing our minds to be saturated by God. And that will give us the ability to overcome every kind of fear. So whatever you're facing today, you're seeing hardship, focus on God. You're seeing challenges, 
focus on God. You're seeing all kinds of calamities around you, focus on God. You're going through a difficult time right now because of the loss of loved ones during this time, focus on God. You were supposed to be married and so and for whatever reason, right now you're faced with a heartache of realizing that it's not coming together like you were hoping, focus on God. You're pregnant at this point in time and you're going to give birth to a child in, 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 in all of this and you're, you're fearful of, of, of what may come about in terms of this disease, focus on God. It does not matter what you're facing. You're facing financial hardship, focus on God. The bottom line is that as you focus on God, there is hope. There is hope for a change. There is, a, there is hope for a difference to be made in your life. If you focus on fear, fear will bring you torment. If you focus on fear, it will cause you to live, you know, on the edge, so to speak, of life. It will cause you to live in panic. It will cause you to feel hopeless. Focus on Almighty God because He's a miracle worker. He's a way maker. He's the one who is able to do wonders in your life. And he can come to your storm and he can say, peace be still. And the winds, the Bible said, and the storms will obey. And here you are going through challenging times. Be an individual of faith and do not allow fear to have its way in your life. The word of God declare that the just shall live by faith. That, that phrase started off um, back in the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk as he was facing an immense national crisis. And as he was going through that time of crisis, in the midst of a time when he had no no answer as it relates to the future. No answer as it relates to the present. And as he stood there and fear would want to come and consume his life, he looked out there and he said, though the fig tree will not blossom, I will not find fruit in the vine and all the different challenges that would come across my, my path. He said, I will not give in to fear. I will not give in to hopelessness because the just shall live by his faith. Paul the, the Apostle in, um, in, in Romans chapter 1 said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believe. And then after he went into that, he said, uh, uh, he, he said, now the just shall live by faith. And the writer of Hebrews here in chapter 10 of Hebrews again made mention of it saying here, yes, 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 you must not give away your confidence, which has great reward. And then he said, for yet a little while in verse 37, he who is coming will come and will not tarry. And then he said, um, now the just shall live by faith. We must become people of faith. The writer of Hebrews said, uh, uh, said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going through challenging times where the, 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 the road of life somehow is like trying to find grip uh, is so difficult at this moment in time. There is so much to create fear and anxiety and overwhelm us with a sense of hopelessness. But our job, our job is to recognize that we, the just, will live by his, his faith. As a matter of fact, uh, faith is the action that's going to give you traction on the slippery roads of life. You're going through challenging times right now. You're going through the rigorous um, uh, perplexities of life. The complexities and convolutedness of, of this world right now is just altogether overwhelming. I want to say to you, and I want to speak into your spirit today, that if you have faith in God, it's going to make all the difference in the world. R.W. Schambach was known for his famous line, the late um, R.W. Schambach. He was known for this line, you do not have a problem. 
All you need is faith in God. And may I say to you today that faith in God will make all the difference in your life. Faith in God. Trust God. Trust his word. Stand on him. Do not be moved. Be immovable and unshakable as it relates to the promises of God. And you will overcome. You will rise to a new, a new standard of excellence in the things of God because your anchor is sure, safe and secure while the winds blow and the storms will move. You have an anchor that keeps a soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll fastened to the rock Jesus Christ which cannot be moved grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love I want to say to you that God has a plan and a purpose uh, for you today God is in charge of this thing and we must have confidence in God I want to say to you in terms of our mindset we must live with the understanding that we are winners. I said that the last time, that we are the winner man all the time. Or, or, or how do you put that? I'm a winner man. If I, if I go, I'm a winner. If I stay, I'm a winner. It, it doesn't matter how, uh, how things present itself. Perspective is everything. And my anchor is in Almighty God. I look to Him. I live for Him. In persecution, I live for Him. In prosperity, I live for Him. In poverty, I live for Him. It doesn't matter what comes across my path. I live for Him. And as a result of that, the Bible declare, I will not fear what men may do. Why? Because our confidence is in God and we can boldly say the Lord God he is my helper makes a difference it really does perspective live with the understanding that you are a winner you're a winner in God and if you do not know almighty God if you do not know his son Jesus Christ and has not accepted him as your personal savior what I'm saying today may not help you as much but I want to challenge you today to consider him and to understand that he loves you he died for your sins and he can come into your life and it can change your perspective and give you inner peace inner satisfaction fulfillment purpose of life and make all the difference in the world and you can live as a winner really makes a difference we also must, must approach everything with the understanding that our God is in charge. You know, that gives me the ability to, to sleep well. To know that, yes, the storms are out there, but guess what? My God is in charge. Do you think God is surprised by corona or, or anything like that? Do you think God is sitting there in the heavenly, you know, grabbing his hand and, 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 and twitching and saying to him, Oh my God! And then all of a sudden, oh, no, 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 I'm God. No, God is not doing that. God is in charge. God knows that he is God. God knows that he is unlimited in power. God knows that he's unlimited in wisdom. God knows that he is omnipresent, which means that he's everywhere present at the same time. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. And fear not, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And by faith, we can overcome any obstacle. Join us for our worship, 1030 on Sunday mornings, and you can see sermons on YouTube and grow with us in the faith. We are digging into the Word of God. We go on Facebook Live. Tune in and grow with us. We'll see you again at The Rock. Yeah.